From a class of 30 students, 18 study commerce and 24 study drama. Every student studies either commerce or drama. We're asked to draw a Venn diagram that captures this information. There are three more questions. How many students study commerce but not drama? How many, studies, how many students study drama but not commerce? How many students study both drama and commerce? Okay, well let's start by drawing a Venn diagram. Remembering that a Venn diagram is a great mechanism for capturing information where often we might have overlapping regions. We might have some, some things or people that are counted twice. So here let's draw a sample space and we'll call this sample space A. This is going to be this, this is going to indicate that all students are captured within this sample space. And in this sample space, we're going to draw a couple of regions. One of the regions is going to represent the students who study commerce, and one of the regions is going to represent the students who study drama. Now, one of the questions we need to, ask, that we need to answer at the moment is, do we want these regions to overlap? In other words, will there be some students who study both drama and commerce? And a good way of figuring this out is to go back and look at our numbers. So it says here that every student studies either commerce or drama. That's important. We've also said that 18 students study commerce and 24 students study drama. Let's imagine, like, let's imagine that, that every student who studies commerce only studies commerce. They don't study drama. And also every student who studies drama only studies drama. They don't study commerce. Imagine that that were the case. What would be the conclusion? Well, the conclusion would be that we'd have 18 students who study just commerce and 24 students who study just drama. And so overall, we'd have this number of students, all up, 18 plus 24. In my head, that's 42, 42 students. But we're told that we only have a class of 30 students. So what we must be doing here is we must be counting some students twice. In other words, imagine this. Imagine you're in the class and you say to this particular class of 30 students, OK, I want everyone who studies commerce to raise their hand. And so all those students raise their hand, you go through and you record the number of people with their hands raised and we'd say, you know, okay, there are 18 students who are studying commerce. Then you'd ask those students to put down their hand. Imagine that you then ask all the students who study drama to put up their hands and they all put up their hands and you count, there are 24 hands raised and then you ask them to put down their hands. Now, if you would counted every hand raised, there'd be 42 hands, but only 30 students in the class, which means that when they had their hands raised, some students must have had their hands raised for studying commerce and for studying drama. In other words, there are some students who study both commerce and drama, and you would have counted those people twice. So, from this information, what can we conclude about the number of students who study both commerce and drama? Well, that's easy. We can calculate that number. We can just say 42 minus 30. So we, subtra we, we subtract 30 from the total number of hands raised, and we get 12. So there are 12 students who had their hands raised for both studying commerce and studying drama. So what we can do here is we can draw two regions, one region here, one region here. We'll call this region, we'll indicate, we'll call this region C, for this is the students who study commerce, this region D this is the students who study drama. And in between, this region in between here, this indicates the students who study both commerce and drama, we're going to put 12 students in there. So there must be 12 students in this class who study both commerce and drama. Now before we go forward, how many people are in this section? So in, in this sample space in the A region, but not in the C or D region. Well, it says here that every student studies either commerce or drama. So consequently, this, this section represents if, if there was a student, if there were a student in this section, it would be a student who studies neither commerce nor drama. So because there are no students that satisfy that criteria, we're going to put zero here. There are no students in this class who study neither commerce nor drama. Every student studies at least commerce, at least one of the subjects, commerce or drama. Okay, so what about commerce? We, we want to fill in this section. So this, this, this section here, this represents the students who just study commerce. They study commerce, but they don't study drama. So here we know there are 18 students who study commerce all up, and 12 of those students also study drama. So how many students just study commerce? Well, that's going to be 18 minus 12. That's going to be 6. So there are going to be 6 students who study commerce and commerce alone, 12 students who study commerce and drama all up. The, the students in the class who study commerce, there are going to be 18 of them. 
What about those who study drama? Well, we know that 24 students overall study drama. 12 of those students also study commerce. So how many study drama and just drama? We're going to have 24 minus 12 equals 12 students. So we can fill in 12 here. So all up we have 6 students who study commerce and just commerce, 12 students who study drama and commerce, and 12 students who study drama and just drama. And all up 6 plus 12 plus 12, 6 plus 12 is 18, plus 12 again is 30, so we know for sure that there are 30 students in this class. So we've drawn a Venn diagram that captures this information. How many students study commerce but not drama? That's going to be represented by this number, that's going to be 6. How many students study drama but not commerce? That's represented by this number. 12. And how many students study both drama and commerce? That's going to be represented by this number in this region here, 12. Well, we've now effectively answered the question, but might, you might ask, what's this got to do with probability? Uh, how, how can this be applied to probability in some way? Well, imagine that our questions were somewhat different. Instead of how many students study commerce but not drama, imagine that the question was, uh, suppose that a student from this class is chosen at random, what is the probability that that student studies commerce but not drama? Well, we know that there are 30 students in the class. Uh, the probability is going to be some fraction. Uh, we can express it in a fractional form. So 30 is going to be our denominator. That's going to be the number of equally likely outcomes. And 6 is going to be the number of favorable, favorable outcomes. So if we had what is the probability if a student chosen at random studies commerce but not drama, that's simply going to be, I'll do this in a different color, that's going to be 6 over 30, and that reduces to 1 in 5. What about how many students study drama but not commerce? Imagine if, that, if this question was different. Imagine if it was, uh, suppose that a student is drawn at random. What is the probability that the student studies drama but not commerce? Well, again, we'd have 30 as our denominator, and our numerator would be 12. There are 30 possible equally likely outcomes, and 12 of them meet this condition. So here the probability would be 12 over 30. Once again, we have a common factor of 6, so this is going to be 2 over 5. Suppose a student is chosen at random, what is the probability that student studies both drama and commerce? Well, it's going to be 12 over 30 again. That's going to be 2 over 5.